welcome to the GDP side. This gentle driving from Paul's project aims to, do, to solve the challenge of the wind industry, how to install XXL monopiles. It's not only about the size, but also the sound that will be emitted during the installation of these foundation pumps. In this project, we look at alternative power driving techniques that not only improve the drivability, but emits less sound and make sure that the sole bearing capacity stays uncompromised. Offshore wind turbines are getting larger, bigger and heavier. And uh, this also has an effect on the supporting structures, such as monopiles. The challenge is um, that although we can manufacture turbines and monopiles in these sizes, uh, the installation really is a, is a challenge. So large monopiles require larger forces to drive them into the soil. The sound that you emit during those uh, pile driving becomes larger. And that's where we face also the risks in terms of going over the allowable sound levels. Uh, there are three major classes of techniques which either are used or are being developed. All these three techniques basically push the pile down. When uh, we push the pile downwards, well, due to what we call the Poisson's effect, the pile a little bit expands in the radial direction. And uh, even though this expansion is quite small, it does have effects. One, without this expansion, the pile would simply doesn't go down. But on the other hand, it also increases the soil resistance and probably also reduces their soil bearing capacity. And definitely, it is the radial expansion that generates noise and work. So what I thought of, is there some excitation which does not induce any radial expansion? And the answer was yes, that's a torsional excitation. So if we just rotate in a clockwise, anti-clockwise, the top of the pile, then the pile will not expand radially. And second, it is good to introduce higher frequency vibrations as well. They enable sometimes even uh, soil compaction, which is good for the stability of the pile. And uh, they also disturb the soil at much less distance from the pile. The project consists out of two phases. The first phase, we aim to prove the concept of the newly developed torsional shaker. We do that by a field test in which we also gather the data that we need for the second phase. The second phase is more the validation of newly developed prediction models. Our consortium consists out of 15 partners. We have knowledge institutes, marine contractors, manufacturers and also turbine developers. Our knowledge institutes consist out of TU Delft, TNO, ECN and Delta Airs. We have marine contractors, Voskalis, Van Noord, CW Heavy Lifting, Cape Holland, IHC. We have project developers, Energy, Shell and Anaco. And we even have the innovative top hydraulic turbine developers and also the big monopiles manufacturer, SIF. This was the first project which was uh, really started up in the new GROW consortium. First time this idea was uh, sounded and presented to the partners in 2016. Even. And uh, then, of course, their uh, negotiations started already full pace in 2017. And then the tests were performed last year. And of course, the tests required a lot of preparation. The major one being the design of a completely brand new shaker, which excites both the vertical and the torsional vibrations. Once we started with this project, we first thought on developing a small-scale shaker. This prototype uh, was designed together with the people from DEMO and tested at the Stabbing Lab in the Faculty of Civil Engineering at TU Delft. The main idea uh, to design this scale shaker was to use the same working principle as the one intended to use for the bigger GDP shaker. From there, Given that we wanted to explore different possibilities, we designed the shaker with the maximum flexibility uh, in some features, such as the uh, amount and, and position of the masses that provide the exact moment, as well as the frequency of rotation. The 
shaker is composed by mainly an aluminium block, a motor and a few masses uh, that also rotate along with the, with the gears. So we create a torsional moment that allows us to drive the pile into the soil. The engine has the capability to go up to 6000 RPMs, so this is approximately 100 Hz, which allows us to study different uh, rotational frequencies. After doing this, um, this large scale test uh, with all the knowledge gained, we came up with a final product which consists of the GDP shaker, which was finally tested at the mass flag during the experimental campaign. This shaker was mainly designed by two companies, uh, by Cape Holland and the IHC. So uh, before the experimental campaign could begin, we had to find a suitable site. And uh, the site we ended up selecting was uh, provided by the port of Rotterdam uh, on the Tweede Maasvlakte. Once we had a suitable site, we conducted initial and then more detailed uh, geotechnical investigations to confirm that uh, the soil on this site was really what we wanted and to select the best location for the piles. The preliminary site investigation was mainly uh, cone penetration testing, CPTs, and these are meant to get familiarized with what type of uh, uh, soil we have uh, what type of densities or properties we can encounter. And from these, we needed to select a zone where we will install the piles. Um, before we could uh, conduct the experimental work though, we conducted a long risk assessment process uh, to address safety and environmental concerns. And uh, we also arranged for all the logistics that go along with such a field campaign for example, uh, the road plates, fencing, security, and office space, and of course a crane to uh, lift the equipment. Well, the main uh, point right now is to install the, uh, the big pile over there. So I will run through uh, yeah, what we're going to do. First thing is to uh, upright it with the slings, then we will uh, use the forklift. Once the shaker was ready, then we installed nine piles using three different techniques. Uh, the first was a reaction pile to act as a sort of anchor for the loading test. Uh, we then installed the first three test piles using a conventional impact hammer from IHC. And we then installed four test piles using the GDP shaker. And finally, one with a vibro hammer from Cape Holland. And the intention is to look at these more conventional installation methods and the new GDP shaker and try to compare and, and see how each of them behaves in installation, but also for the lateral loading capacity. So this is the, the part that we installed using the GDP method. Uh, we have ground monitoring sensors around this pile, uh, one uh, earth pressure cell and pore water pressure transducer next to the pile, and another one behind the pile. So, uh, so these two are going to measure the uh, lateral total stress in the soil at different depths, plus the pore water pressure that is generated during the pile driving and also during the load test that we have uh, later. This is a shape axle array sensor, and this is measuring the, the lateral displacement in the soil due to pile driving. So this is also quite important uh, sensor for us, and it is in between the pile and the reaction pile, because we want to also measure the soil displacement during the load test. So that's, uh, that's the, the saw sensor. And then we have two ground monitoring uh, boreholes here. This is used for crosshole sonic logging. So what we did, we did uh, one crosshole sonic logging before pile installation to know the state of the soil before pile installation, and we will do one after pile installation to see how much change we can observe in the dynamic properties of the soil. 
Also the pile itself, we have instrumentation on it. We have fiber optics on the two opposite sides of, sides of the pile. We have thermometers attached to the pile to measure the temperature that is generated during pile driving. And we have accelerometers. These are measuring the energy that is, uh, goes into the pile during the pile installation. So we are here at the site to show to the public a new technology about how to drive the piles in a silent and very efficient manner. We invited the, the Dutch industry, RVO, and the Knowledge Institute to come and witness uh, the demonstration of one of the pile installations with the torsional shaker. Around 120 people attended uh, this demonstration. We also had the opportunity to present all of the technical details, what we are going to do and how we're going to execute it. So, in reality, offshore wind foundations are first installed and then used. And by the word use, we mean basically the fact that a foundation is there to bear the loads that are transmitted by the superstructure, in this case, the wind turbine. We try to replicate in the field uh, this kind of situation, which after installing the foundation, we subjected it to lateral loading applied at the top of the pile. We designed a post-installation test in a way to have a full control of the loading program. So we could basically uh, decide and establish and uh, make sure that it was as desired, uh, the amount of force and the time history of this force applied to the pile. So at this stage of the project, uh, we are testing the post-installation lateral performance of piles. We have in this site installed eight piles and a big reaction pile in the middle. And the scope is to test the post-installation uh, performance on lateral loading at the moment. So we have the loading frame over there, which is a beam connecting the two piles, and there is a jack pulling those piles together. We got the cover of the jack to protect it from the car's environment here in the mass lighted bay. So what we are seeing here is the jack doing its work. We are actually hearing mostly because the displacements are very small. We're hearing the jack doing its work, uh, pulling those piles, as I said, together. We have to keep in mind that in nature, this kind of lateral loading uh, comes in repetitions, but these repetitions are not regular. And basically, you need to try and think that uh, if you want to produce uh, successfully an, an experiment that is representative of reality, we need to account for the fact that uh, lateral loads come with different amplitude and also different oscillation frequency. For that reason, when we were uh, loading the pile in the field, we made sure that we were actually applying uh, irregular uh, loading programs that would basically mix things up a little bit and uh, make sure that we would have uh, uh, fast and slow loading, but also small vibration and large amplitude vibration. And that made sure that our experiment was uh, as representative as possible. But the test results showed a lot of things which, for example, I and I dare to say there, the whole team didn't expect actually directly. So for example, apparently the stiffness of the soil or the against the pile upon installation, uh, in the case of the GDP installation is much higher than in the other techniques. We also uh, saw that the energy that we need to spend is quite significant. Uh, it, which even can become prohibitive at uh, large, uh, large scales, full scales. So that gave us an idea that we need to design even yet a new, fundamentally new shaker, which we are doing now. And then in the test we saw that uh, the real, realistically, even though the shakers are supposed to vibrate on their fine frequency, 
they don't do it. They really induce a lot of high hormones. So these three findings we managed to identify just by these tests. And I think this is an invaluable information that we got from the tests. We need to prove that the GDP method is silent because of the strict regulations regarding the other water noise pollution. All countries nowadays forbid the installation of foundation piles if noise levels are exceeded. And this is a risk that the offshore industry does not accept. Actually. For this purpose, we work on the development of a so-called vibroacoustic model. That is a model that actually includes both the pile with the surrounding soil and seawater, focusing now on noise emission. We have, of course, more than 10 years of experience in this type of modeling, but now we, what we actually try to do is to combine the pile penetration process together with noise emission. And that has never been done before. So at the moment we are we are busy analyzing the data that were collected during the experimental campaign, and uh, it is important to keep in mind that with such a large bulk of data, even just plotting and trying to make sense by representing in a smart way uh, this data is very important because it helps you to put things into the right perspective. During the stage of observation and description of experimental data, we are trying as best as we can to understand differences between the different installation methods in terms of what they did differently in the soil around the pile. We need to provide the industry with the tools to predict what will actually happen when a new pile is to be installed with the GDP shaker. And those models are not available nowadays. This will, of course, help the industry to investigate the various drivability scenarios together with the expected noise emission in an integral manner. These two aspects are now nowadays examined separately. Actually, these uh, modeling aspects are needed in the design phase of every new wind farm. Most existing models are one-dimensional because they were developed originally for small diameter piles that are used in the oil and gas industry. Our focus here is on large diameter piles of the also wind industry. Thus, we have actually to move from one-dimensional to three-dimensional modeling. 3D approach is arguably the best way we have nowadays to try and reproduce the, the field uh, test that we performed in the mass flat. So the idea is now that after we develop and verify our numerical modeling tools, we are going to do extensive parametric analysis to try and see what factors, geotechnical and structural, basically affected the most the, uh, the behavior of the pile and the soil during our test. And that is going to be key to also keep improving and retuning our GDP technology in the future.